Hello class, in this lecture I will talk about a simple linear regression. So usually uh, we do uh, regression to set up relationship between two or more variables. Uh, in this case, as we specified that it is a linear regression, that means we are setting up a relationship by using a line. So as you know, a line has only two variables. So in this lecture, I will be uh, mostly doing regression with two variables. So as you know, the equation of a line uh, from your high school is y is equal to mx plus b or mx plus c uh, uh, whatever you term you used for intercept so here b represents the y intercept and m represents the slope so when I am saying here we are setting up a relationship between two or more variables. Uh, so suppose uh, uh, an example would be what would be what is the relationship between a GPA and hours of study. So we can say GPA is dependent on is a or is a function of uh, hours of study so here in this case gpa is called a dependent variable that is dependent on your hours of study so dependent variable or it is also called response and hours of study would be an independent variable or a predictor so usually if you are representing this by the equation of a line like y is equal to mx plus b from now in this uh, in statistics you represent this as y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x where beta naught is y intercept so if you compare the equations both are same and beta 1 would be the slope and then you will have an error so that is how this formula gets translated. So I will try to discuss what this uh, y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 plus uh, beta 1 x plus, uh, eps uh, plus epsilon which is error. So this sign is called epsilon. Suppose uh, I have this graph in which, so if I am representing GPA and hours of study, uh, the y is GPA, y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. So the way I can write is GPA is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 times hours of study. So I will try to explain how this concept, wo concept works. Suppose mm, I have GPA and then I have hours of study. Mm, 
and then I have some lines. Uh, so I take data from for certain students. Uh, the, I ask them how many hours they study and I ask them how much GPA they have. So such that I can kind of uh, plot uh, uh, a regression, uh, plot their actual values. So these are their actual values. Suppose I ask five students and then this student studies suppose two hours this student studies three hours uh, uh, five hours maybe uh, seven and ten and then the GPA here is one two three and then four so this maybe four will be a little bit higher so if I get this data, the goal is to draw a line. So if you see this data, I'm not able to make any predictions for future. So the main idea about reg regression is to make predictions. So we wanted to develop an equation uh, of a, a line that can kind of help us to predict uh, the um, predict if the number of uh, hours of study is given what would be the GPA so to do that we fit in a line that passes through all these points something like this so the goal is to minimize and this is the epsilon which is the error or sum of all the errors so this is the error for this point so this is what you predicted and this would be the error and again in this case if you see I will use a different color you predicted this point and this would be your error so this epsilon would be the average of all those errors so the goal is to reduce this uh, uh, errors for different uh, um, uh, like different range so overall error should be reduced so that's how you have to fit in a line so this line is called regression line and this is re again this is represented by the equation y hat is equal to um, beta naught plus beta 1 x so y hat represents the predicted value so usually if you see what is this y and what is this y hat the relationship between them is because this is y hat this represents the actual value represents y so we can say y is equal to y hat and in this case because your actual value was lower minus the error which is epsilon so if you consider this point this would be this y is equal to y hat plus the error again y hat represents so this equation can be written as uh, y hat is beta naught plus beta 1 x and then you have minus epsilon so that the this equation is going to boil down to this and the error will be plus or minus if you want so that's how you are going to do the regression equation so this is the concept but usually this entire concept can be uh, done using excel so you can generate that equation using excel uh, that is more simpler so uh, I will try to explain different examples for example I have we just discussed um, the hours of study and then GPA so the equation might look something like this so this means I am predicting this is my equation of a, a regression equation which is beta naught plus beta 1 x so this point represents beta naught which is y-intercept and 
the slope represents beta 1 so in this case as hours of study increases your gpa is also increasing so beta 1 is a positive relationship so it means you will have a positive number here how about let's think about another example uh, price of a house of a house and its uh, area so how does that relation play so the first thing is what is x and what is y so if you think about it y price of the house depends on the area of the house so your y is price is beta naught plus beta 1 times area so that will be your equation so beta naught and beta 1 we will discuss later on how to calculate those so you have this uh, graph where you are saying uh, this is the area of the house so as the area of the house increases the price of the house increases so again this point represents beta naught and this is the slope beta 1 and the equation of a line y hat which is so the y hat would be price beta naught plus beta 1 x where x represents the area so again this is a positive relationship between um, area and price because uh, as the uh, area of the house increases the price of the house increases how about the number of interceptions a quarterback throws so let's call this variable as int for simplicity uh, a quarterback throws and the winning percentage of the team so i can plot this is when y is our winning percentage again uh, this is a dependent variable dependent and this is independent so this is winning percentage is our y so this will be our y and this will be our x so interceptions so as the interceptions increases the winning percentage decreases so that is how our curve is so this is y intercept again which is beta naught and then we have a slope which is um, negative beta 1 so in fact if the, you consider this equation y which is the winning percentage should be y hat should be beta naught minus beta 1 x which is x is the number of interceptions so that's how the relationship is set up and finally no relationship so there there might be situations where there is no relationship so suppose if i want to compare the size of the house and the gpa of a student gpa and size of the house so the we assume, we, we know that the there is no relationship between them so uh, this is size of the house this is gpa so the gpa doesn't change with the size of the house so this is the equation of a line y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x so if you see in this case since we don't have any slope beta 1 becomes 0 so this line becomes y is equal to beta naught which is only the intercept this is beta naught 
so when we do hypothesis testing for such problems so usually in this also you will be doing hypothesis we wanted to know the relationship hypothesis testing so the first step of hypothesis testing is to do define your hypothesis so in this case we were we are interested in our null hypothesis beta 1 is equal to 0 so slope is uh, slope of a line is something that sets up a relationship so if you see if you have a positive relationship positive slope uh, that means the relationship between uh, x and y is positive if you have a negative relationship um, negative slope that means you have a negative relationship so this is there is no relationship so this represents when i say beta 1 this is the slope of a line no relationship between x and y and alternative would be beta 1 not equal to 0 that means there is relationship between x and y and again in this we will be looking at to see the second thing is to uh, we previously we were doing uh, compare uh, your t value or uh, uh, compare your test statistic with critical value so in this case the test statistic value will be the uh, t stat value for the beat beta 1 or slope and you will compare it with t alpha over 2 and then n minus 2 critical value or the other way so this is the critical value or the other way you are going to do the this is to look for p value less than alpha and reject if p value is less than alpha you will reject h null so that's how <coughs> you are going to solve these kind of problems uh, so at this time i will try to solve a problem and then we will kind of uh, discuss uh, different things uh, what are important stuff in regression analysis so let me take this problem so I will go to my uh, Excel so I will post this data in uh, our canvas and we will kind of try to solve this problem so the first thing is uh, if you have hours per week and GPA so you are comparing so you know hours per week is your uh, X which is your independent variable and then uh, the GPA is your Y. So you can kind of uh, uh, this is a quickly how can how you can solve regression problems. So you can go to insert. Uh, you can kind of select this data and go to insert and then in charts go to scatter insert scatter x y or bubble chart. So you go to the scatter plot and then click on this so if you see these are the actual values so i wanted to uh, draw a line that can help me to predict something uh, predict for different values so if you see uh, i can add a trend line so the way i can do it is i click on these bubbles and right click 
and say add trend line so you have a trend line if you see now this can help you to predict if you see this i will make this graph bigger if someone studies uh, for example if someone studies 10 hours so that is this point so if someone studies 10 hours their gpa would be approximately around 2.75 that is how you are going to predict so that is uh, what our estimate is and then if you see this here this value is the gpa is 3.12 so if you consider this point the gpa is 3.12 so your model the error rate for your model would be something around 3. Point, I'm sorry 3.12 minus 2.75 so this is 0 so the error you made is 0.37 so that's how uh, you will be looking at uh, which is uh, uh, like rather than having no information you made uh, a good prediction uh, with uh, uh, your error is only 0.37 so so that is how you are fitting your line uh, that's the reason why you need a line or an equation uh, to help you predict so uh, I can kind of if you want the equation of this line uh, you can click on this trend line and you will get this uh, navigation tool uh, pane on the right side so you can say display equation and display r square So now this is your equation of a this is your equation and this is your uh, r square so this is the easiest way uh, to do regression analysis mm. so your r square represents how accurately your model is so it means your model has an accuracy of 86.37 that means 80 86.37 percentage of this data can be explained by our regression line so that is the meaning so usually r square the higher the r square the more accurate your equa uh, your equation is so uh, r square of one uh, this line will pass through all these points so at this time it's not passing through all these lines it's only touching a couple of uh, points uh, so that's how you will say if r square is zero your model is not good enough uh, like there is no relationship between x and y so your model is not good to make any predictions so that's uh, how you are going to do uh, regression in this uh, in a simpler way but if you wanted to know more about regression so we will kind of use our calculation aids and try to solve this problem uh, so I will go to business statistics and then go to modules and download uh, your uh, calculation aids and download chapter 13 calculation aids now this chapter 13 calculation aids is uh, apply uh, can be used for both chapter 13 and 14 so you will have this so now i suggest you if you see you are only seeing x1 x2 x3 values you need y so just scroll to the left And then you will see y so so you have to put y values here and x in the first column here and x values here so let me copy so these are my y values so I will copy this and then uh, paste it here and then I have my x values uh, 
I'll paste right here. So you get this all everything filled. So in our previous uh, when we did uh, maybe I will erase all this and do it again to show how I got the regression equations such that uh, I will repeat the process such that you guys have a, a better understanding of how to get easily regression equation. Again, I'm going to delete everything here and then now if you see I will select this and then I will do go to insert go to charts scatter plot and once I get this I do right click and select data uh, no I will do uh, right click and uh, go to maybe add trend line I will do right click and do add trend line and do display equation on this navigation on the navigation on the right side so display r square dis, uh, display equation on chart and display r square and that is you have y is equal to 0.1057x plus 1.7959 uh, that is our intercept so our equation is if you see y is equal to 0.1057x plus 1.7959 so what it means is this x is hours of study and y is the GPA so if someone comes and asks you so this equation this equation of a line is applied only from 5 hours to the maximum is 20 hours so beyond that like 0 to 5 and 20 to 25 I can't make any conclusions I can only make any estimates between 5 hours of study to 20 hours of study so le let me think about uh, uh, if someone studies like uh, 14 hours so and then I'm asking you to predict the GPA so what would you do you just have to do uh, put that 14 in this X place and calculate it so that would be 0.1057 multiplied by 14 plus 1.7959 and the GPA would be 3.2757 so that is the beauty of this regression is we can kind of make estimates about it so uh, and uh, a lot of people might study 14 hours and they might end up having different GPAs but on an average what we are saying with this is uh, our estimate is uh, the GPA would be around 3.2757 based on the data given so again I keyed in if you see I took these values and keyed in here and if you see I have different uh, summary values so if you see the coefficients 1.7959 is your intercept and the slope is 0 0.10567 so if you have an equation where y uh, equation of the line let me see uh, so let me go and check in this okay okay so here I think the equation of the line would be this intercept which is 1.795 so this uh, is intercept and this is the slope so the equation of the line 
would be is equal to um, one um, equation of the line would be y is equal to 1.79591 which is our uh, intercept so if you see that that is this value here plus uh, point so that is this value point one zero point one zero five six seven uh, multiplied by x so that would be our equation so these are the quotients which we got the same values when we did uh, in a simple way uh, here which is 1057x plus 1.7959 so that is what uh, uh, this uh, uh, slope is and then uh, so if, when you are solving the first thing you will see here is what is the p-value so when you are doing we wanted to the first thing is do we have a good we wanted to know is there a good relationship between x and y so this p-value if it is less than alpha as we discussed uh, if you see this p-value i discussed in a null hypothesis if i have um, let me go here h uh, let me go to a different sheet maybe so here i discussed our null hypothesis is beta 1 is equal to 0 and alternative will be beta 1 not equal to 0 and p value less than alpha reject h null alpha if it is not given you will assume 0.05 so in our case let's see uh, what is our p value p value is 0 0.00010 so let me write that so our p value is 0 0.00010 is it less than 0 0.05 this is true so that means it is saying reject h null so that means i am rejecting this this is true that means our model is good enough or significant enough to make predictions so our model is good to predict if p value would have been greater than uh, alpha so suppose if p values suppose again i am supposing this suppose if p value is 0.06 then it is uh, greater than 0 0.05 so that means you will not reject h null so that means this is true so that means there is no re relationship between uh, x and y so you you are not able to make any predictions from that model so that's how you can see you can look at this p value or you can look at uh, this p value so the thing is uh, here both will be almost uh, this p value both will be always almost uh, same so that is uh, how you are be solving and then here is your r square value uh, so that is 0.8 that means uh, r square value is also called coefficient of determination coefficient of determination and then as you said if you want to make predictions we asked can you predict for 14 hours you make predictions here 3.275 is your answer so you can do that prediction by using this again this is the new ANOVA table which which is same as uh, the previous one uh, if you see this is the ANOVA table which you are using uh, and you can kind of calculate confidence level for different values you can use uh, uh, suppose 90% confidence you will get those values here
So usually when you do regression analysis, you are not interested in what, what is your intercept. So you usually black out this. So you are not interested in making any conclusions about intercept except that these coefficients. You are more interested in uh, the uh, slope. And then this is the standard error or the standard deviation of the uh, uh, standard error or standard deviation of the slope. So if you see this, this value here is the standard deviation of the slope or standard error. And it is represented by S beta 1. So usually S beta 1, if you see that symbol, that is what this is. And then this T stat value, you can compare it with uh, T alpha over uh, 2 uh, n minus 2 critical value. So this T value, again, you are that is 7.12. So I can take this, maybe I will copy this into a uh, and then I will open a new uh, word document so for hypothesis testing I we discussed that t should be greater than t alpha over 2 um, n minus 2 so if you see t alpha over 2 so if I consider 95 or uh, alpha is equal to 0 0.05 uh, so this is you assume if it is not given so alpha over 2 will be 0.025 and then so this will be t.025 and then the degree of freedom Uh, n minus 2 so the degree of freedom n minus 2 so usually comes from this one which is residual so that is degree of freedom n minus 2 so I will go there and uh, so that is 8 So the degree of freedom is 8. So I will calculate T.025 and 8. So I will go to statistical tables and look for uh, go to T table. and then look for 0 0.025 which is this one and degree of freedom is 8 so that would be this one so the value here would be 2.3060 so that means I'm looking for uh, 2.3060 so 7.12 greater than 2.30 Six zero, so yeah, this is a true statement. So you will reject your null hypothesis. So that's how you are going to solve these kind of problems. So usually, you when you have this, uh, if you see um, this, this is uh, again this is if you see this is the est estimated variance of. Uh, of errors this is also called a common variation so this is common variation and you have to do square root for standard deviation uh, do so I will write it here do square root for standard deviations so 
if they ask you any values you when you click here it will tell you what to do this is the standard error this is 95 percent confidence interval these two are 95 percent confidence interval and then this is 90 percent confidence interval and then degree of freedom for regression this is again ANOVA table like chapter 12 this is degree of freedom for regression this is the degree of freedom for residual or error this is the total degree of freedom this is some of the squares for regression some of the squares for uh, residual and total this is mean square regression this is uh, mean square residual or error and f value uh, and then you have a p value so if you wanted confidence level you can change here you know, maybe 99 percent and then you will get a different confidence level so if you see confidence interval both are positive that means uh, it's a positive the first thing is slope is positive it's a positive relationship and confidence interval both are positive that means it has a positive uh, relationship uh, so that's how you are going to solve a regression problem uh, let me uh, conclude the lecture here and we will try to come back and solve Hawks problems on this thank you